where this first segment, what I want to do is there were some amazing sound bites this week from Santa Clara. So I'm going to share the screen and we're going to play a couple of them right here. Um, the first one you're going to hear is Forrester. And I asked Forrester, a lot of people are asking me, what about Brendel? Brendel, Jake Brendel was the lowest graded 49er pass protection offensive lineman this week. He got the lowest PFF grade. Um, and so, you know, I don't, I, I like Drake Nugent a lot. I like Nick Sakel a lot. Um, I think Feliciano is, I, 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 I gotta be honest. And I like Brendel and Brendel's a good dude, but I kind of think that some of those other guys might, might be better options. Um, Brendel has not done well, you know, two years ago, he's a pro bowl alternate last year. We saw some significant regression this year. It's it, he, he, he just got bounced around. He, his, his negative plays in this Viking game were so negative that it was just like, wow. I mean, you look at some of those plays and you're like, this guy, they got to replace this guy. Um, and I, I don't like being the guy saying, oh, they got to replace this guy because I'm going to go into the locker room and I'm going to face all these guys up. I'm going to face up Jake Brendel. I'm going to talk to Jake. So it's like the last thing I want to do is be like, you know, they need to bench Jake. But if I felt that, I would say it regardless if I have to face him up or not. Um, but, you know, I, I do feel bad because these guys – you know, I mean, they're out there doing their best and we're critiquing the whole thing. Uh, but, you know, I'm going to call it the way I see it. Here is me asking a question that I'm sure Jake probably doesn't like. Uh, I'm asking his coach, Chris Forster, why Brendel is better than the other guys. Here it is. Perception is that Brendel might have struggled when I watched the All-22. I might be wrong, but you have a lot of centers here. What? Why, you're obviously going with him. He's the starter. Why is he better than your other options at center? Well, first of all, he had a better game than he did the first game. Uh, everybody did for the most part. Hard to believe with the sack production and things like that. But we had, we did take a step forward in a lot of ways. I think some of the bad plays stood out, and so that's it. Oh, he's he right now is uh, he's he's a much better option. Quickness, uh, intelligence, experience, one-on-one uh, -on -one pass blocking ability, ability to finish in the run game on the second level, his ability to um, to snap off on double teams. I just listed off about seven or eight things there that are all he's better than Barch. He's better than Zakel. He's better than Nugent. He's better than a lot of players as to why he was an alternate last year uh, at the Pro Bowl level because he does. He does have a lot of those traits that do those things. And he's never perfect. There's there's like all of us. He's, it's every year's different. And we got we got to work our way into this year and see. Maybe some of these issues that we've seen will stick around. So maybe they won't. We'll have to see. So, I mean, and. I respect the hell out of Chris. He's one of the great offensive line coaches in the game, and he's covering his guy a little bit, and he knows he he knows exactly what I'm getting at. He knows exactly uh, why we're asking the questions. Um, you know, these guys know it all. I mean, they, they really do. They watch all the film. They know. They know. They know what we're questioning. They know why we're questioning it. Um, I thought that was interesting. Now, Chris is also really good if you want to get, like, the bottom line on, you know, what happened on this play? What happened on that play? And he's really good at kind of painting the picture. I'm going to share the screen. I asked him about this sack on Brock Purdy um, that Trent Williams gave up. And this was a great play by Blake Cashman, the linebacker for, um, for Minnesota. And I asked Chris about this and kind of an interesting discussion. And Kev put together the, the video up top so you can watch a little bit of the video of the play. Here's, here's Forster. And I asked him on this play, What's going on here? Because the linebacker Cashman, who you're seeing up top here, just ricochets off of Trent after it, he sets kind of wide and just ricochets off his right shoulder right into the quarterback, and Purdy never had a shot. And here's uh, here's Forster's perspective on the play. Cashman kind of ricocheted off Trent and got the quarterback. It was a, They were playing some kind of a game up front. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, think of that, that play. And was there a miscommunication? No, no. Banks? No, but it's, it's Trent, Trent, Trent turned too quick and the guy picked around a pick stunts. Very, very common thing that happens. It was, a by, it was a byproduct of what happened was we had a very similar protection earlier, and Trent set really good and did a good job on his guy. And, and, the, the, there's another guy free and it forced kind of the one where Purdy got sacked. He kind of just backed into it and the whole thing kind of collapsed around him. It was that sack. It was still hard to remember, but anyway, got kind of collapsed in around him and that next. So Trent was feeling like, Oh, I can't set his vertical. Cause he felt like that was his problem. It wasn't Purdy kind of ran into Trent. Well, the next time we got a third down, Trent said, I got to go set wider. And it's the exact thing you can't do when they run that pick game. Cause there's Trent can't banks can't necessarily get his hands on a guy just by the angles and what it is. So Trent has to, I say, you have to protect yourself from that pick. And you have to, and it's harder when it comes from depth, 
you don't see it as quickly. And, and it did. It came and Trent flipped his hips too soon, which we did the whole game. We did a lot of things too, too much that caused the problem. But it's a good, it, like I said, I'm glad it happened week two and not week 12. And we can, that's something to build on and happen. But that's 100%. Uh, that's, that's on Trent. He's got to feel, he's got to see it. It's a good game by them. Point the finger and say Trent's Trent's got to see that. And Banks maybe could have helped, but I don't think Banks could have helped much on that one. So a good evaluation there from uh from Forster. And, and that's kind of what I love about Forster is that he, you know, he gives you a lot. I mean, he'll he he doesn't give you short answers or non-answers. He answers the question, and you may not always agree with them, but he answers the question. Um, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna play one more here before we take a break. And that is um the question that I asked Nick Sorensen. Um, and I, I like Sorensen. I, you know, I, I really felt after week one that he was the right guy for the job. Then week two, obviously things didn't go as well. The, the big play was the Jefferson 97 yard touchdown. I asked Sorensen about this play. Um, if he wanted Odom on Jefferson, he doesn't really answer. So listen to my question, listen to his answer and hear if you hear an answer to my question in his answer play of this game was probably the Jefferson touchdown and mm -hmm. it appeared he lined up against Odom is that the matchup that you wanted yeah I mean it was in those situations you know they made a great play he made a great throw and catch and obviously you just you want to execute better and you always look at yourself like I said how can we better be better in those situations that goes for myself the players everybody so it's just they made a heck of a play it was a really good throw really good catch and finish See, so I, I mean, there you go. I mean, I like the accountability in that, hey, it's, it's, you know, it's on me, it's on the players, it's on this. Um, <laughs> but, you know, the bottom line is that, that that's not really an answer. The question was, you had George Odom matched up at the line of scrimmage with the best receiver in football. Is that the matchup you wanted? And I think a, a, a little bit more transparency there would have been like, hey, you know what? That wasn't an ideal matchup. That wasn't exactly the matchup we wanted. Um, uh, they did some things to get into that match. Whatever, some some perspective on why a guy who's barely played at all and played mostly special teams and is now a safety because of injuries uh, from scrimmage, how does that guy get matched up with the best receiver in football in a man-to-man -man situation off the line of scrimmage where he's just there's no chance he could run with 4-4 Justin Jefferson? And he didn't. And then there was no chance that Jair Brown sitting, you know, 17 yards off the outside hash, could, a flat footed could turn and, and burn and run with Jefferson. Jair runs four, six and Jefferson runs four, four flat. And that's what it looked like as Jefferson just ran right by him.